just remember, the next time when you think that the Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame is having a good format, just remember, we're going to consider the Yu-Gi-Oh! format a nice little teddy bear full of animal crackers. Every time you bite the head off of an animal cracker and try to uh, fuse it together, you're literally doing what our good friend from Fullmetal Alchemist did. You are playing with nature, and you're going to end up fusing your daughter with a doggo, and then you're going to have girl doggo, and then you're going to be tampering with nature. So remember, the next time when you eat an animal cracker and you think that shoving the ass of the animal cracker to the face of the other animal cracker is a good thing, just remember, we all cried during Full Metal Alchemist, because that shit was sad as fuck. Alright, let's dig into this, shall we? I had a scary revelation today, and just because we're having a uh, quote-unquote good format right now, doesn't mean that this is going to last forever. Now, we've seen in the past Konami will give us a pretty okay format, you know, things will be shaping up, and then some bullshit's gonna happen. Now, remember the last time we had some uh, general bullshit happen in this game? It was, things were going really well after Zoo Format. You know, Pendulum Magician started to show up. You know, things were, things were going pretty good. And then they decided to give us Double Helix. Now, we could have banned Master Plan, and we could have had a pretty okay format, but we had to do a triple quick fix. And triple drone, just, it was an entire shit show. Now, the point in today's video is what if what if this is just the calm before the storm and you got always got to remember yeah they always make the uh the meme of the glass is what half full and half empty uh kind of symbolize a little bit more yin and yang but just because we've taken away the shit doesn't mean that there isn't more shit coming i think that's kind of one of the things we like to point out now we still have Azathoth, Nyala, and now, granted these two typically don't cause degenerate interactions, but they only become degenerate when paired with other things. Now, when I make the the statement saying paired with other things, uh, Azathoth and Nyala are only going to be massively degenerate because they shut off hand traps for the turn. They're typically going to be your go-to monsters you're going to use to stop off your opponent from advancing literally their combo turn. You know, if I'm playing an FTK, such as Plants, and I resolve Azathoth, Nyarla, um, cool, you can no longer activate hand traps for the turn, which means I am free to advance my entire combo as I see fit with no interruption to you. And that's what makes it so free. And I think a lot of people kind of forgot about Azathoth and Nyarla existing. But they're just so far on the back burner right now, it's not even funny. Now, the next evil that will probably be coming, and it should be no shock to you, and it, it, it's Needle Fiber. Now, Needle Fiber has been showing his ugly head in the OCG. Like, he's literally the fucking staple from hell. Literally every deck that can play him is playing him at the moment. Being able to watch someone a tuner from the deck, uh, literally just the most generic. I didn't actually think when they made a generic synchro like monster that it would be as deceptively broken as it actually is. Well, come to find out when you slap such generic restrictions on a monster, well, it tends to become broken. So. Being able to bring out Ghost Ogre from the deck is also pretty fucking good. So creating creating this quote unquote monster, I, I don't think it should have been as broken as it was, but when it comes to application in Thereo into the introduction of the game, well shit becomes broken. And you reach case in point of Needle Fiber, being a card that can beam out a tuner, extend combo plays, and can turn out into a Wonder Magician, and Wonder Magician can pop stuff on your opponent's turn. Or, you know, Coral Dragon, or any of the other great Synchro Tuner monsters out there. You know, if only heroes could get decent fucking support, am I right? 
Now, needle fiber changes the game in a way that I don't think a lot of people want to deal with because it turns the plant engine into something more than it actually is. And with the plant engine already being limited as it is to the great degree and like through the degeneracy of the ages that it has been, you know, you have to put a fucking eye on that shit. And needle fiber breaks these boundaries and it, it makes things broken. And I don't, I don't want to see needle fiber come to the TCG because I don't want to see us go back into another tier zero form. I'm really enjoying this diversity right now. For the first time in a while, I can definitely say that I'm happy playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, I enjoyed it in zoo format because it was degenerate. I enjoyed it in a little bit of spiral format. Uh, I definitely am enjoying Spiral post ban list because the deck actually makes you think. And you know, using using your old ticker up here, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, on the flip side of the equation, we have another silent tick game monster, and we'll probably be getting this one in May. And I've been talking about for a while now that you should probably make sure that you have your Goki shit put aside now. I don't know how well it's going to perform in the TCG, um, but considering all the Goki monsters have very beautiful once per turn clauses that they all just search for themselves, but looking at Goki Troy Mare from the OCG, the Troy Mare monsters are absolutely fucking phenomenal for what they do. They were, I think the way that they were designed was good. Being able to discard draw for Coblink, get further into your deck. Ibli is a... I, I love Ibli as a card because being able to revive a Link monster from the graveyard um, is great. And then being able to search for it off of the Link one doesn't leave a lot not to be desired, but the archetype has a lot of, has a lot of room to grow. And when they literally released what Anti-Firewall and company um, with the rest of the deck. Um, Agoki picked up the deck and said, well, you know what, fuck it. We're all self-replacing monsters. We all have the ability to climb up the link ladder. Now, when Goki first came out, everyone was like, oh man, like the deck is so shit. Like, sure, it's cool that they can all self-replace, you know, but when you have a spell card called Goki Rematch, and Goki Rematch allows you to bring back two monsters with different levels, any anytime a generic Esque spell card for an archetype comes out that has unlimited potential, such as Goki Rematch. You're you're going to want to explore that archetype and see if see if there's possibly something that will break it. Well, when Troy Mares finally reached the TCG and the May set a flood or flames of destruction, you're going to see the Troy Mare archetype, or whatever their official English name is going to be, break these monsters. And Goki's are only going to continue to get more support. Literally, with Trick Stars, same thing. You have a deck that literally is named, well, I'm an anime archetype, so hope you enjoy your next 20 years of support. Look at, look at fucking Black Wings at this point in time. Black Wings continue to get support to this very day because they were a fan favorite. Now, you're you're in the era, literally Cyverse is the Pendulum archetype, and then, what is it? I, I would definitely consider Gokis to be the Raid Raptors of the set. I don't even know what you'd really consider Trickstars, but the thing is Trickstars are definitely a fan favorite over Cyverse and the rest of the stuff, which is very interesting. It just means that, you know, you have time to be prepared for literally the flood that's about to come in terms of new stuff. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on was Trubni. And Burning Abyss has been one of these decks that the TCG loves. Oh, catch me outside with that opinion, why don't you? The, the TCG loves Burning Abyss. And I, I've said it now, and I'll probably continue to say it, I, I think Natal Fiber is a prize card. It's just... It's too fucking powerful. Now, on the flip side of the equation, you have a perfect candidate over here named Trubney. And I know a lot of people be like, God damn it, Robbie, Trubney's not going to be the prize card, you fat ass. Stop fucking telling lies. I think Trubney's a perfectly balanced card, and it can go in the prize card category. I don't see why it can't. There's absolutely no reason 
for Shrubni, honestly, not to be the prize card. You know, you have you, maybe the Plant Link monster, but I don't, I don't think so, man. Like, I something about Shrubni's design being generic, and just something about the West loving Burning Abyss. Definitely makes me think that, ho ho ho, Burning Abyss might be getting the old shaft of Rooney. You know, prepare those thousand dollar wallets, because that price card is coming to town. So, I definitely think Needle Fiber is too powerful to make the price card, which means the only other thing left on the list for August, I think it's, I think it's gonna be uh, our friend Shrubney, but... That's just my two cents. So, what do you guys think about this? I think this is just kind of the calm before the storm in the TCG. But, that's just my opinion. So, tell me you guys think down below in the description. I'm going to take my Hawaiian wearing ass shirt to get some food, because it is lunchtime. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Card Fight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.